You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney to assist you prior to questioning and to be with you during questioning if you so desire. If you cannot afford an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed for, your, for you prior to questioning. These words are now used every time a suspect is arrested in our country. This practice, the Miranda decision, came about following the arrest of Ernesto Arturo Miranda about 50 years ago. It changed the way suspects were handled by Officer Carol Cooley and other law enforcers in the 60s. It changed law enforcement. It changed the judicial process that's in front of us. It ensured the rights of the, of the suspect as well as the victims. The fact is, is that as you talk about the Miranda, you talk about what it does, it balances the scales of justice for both parties. Carol Cooley performed as a detective and during the investigation and the uh, confession that Miranda gave, he did what any other officer at that time period in history would have done and it was acceptable all the way up to the Arizona Supreme Court. There was nothing wrong with what was done. What happened in the U.S. Supreme Court that reversed it was that they took the Fifth and Sixth Amendment that were required in the courtroom and wanted officers on the street to apply it. One of the original officers in the Miranda case that made history says he remembers Ernesto's confession like it was yesterday. He says, even though it took place in the 60s, it's well in his mind. I was at a loss at that time for words because I figured we probably were on thin ground and we'd probably be taking him home shortly without an arrest. Even though at that time, I felt that uh, he was the, the suspect, but I didn't have probable cause. Here's the interesting thing. With my silence there, he asked me, how did I do? And I said, uh, you didn't do so good, Ernie. And he said, well, I guess I better tell you about it. So he then confessed to the crime that I was investigating. Uh, then uh, he also confessed to the other crime, the robbery that occurred November uh, 27, 1962. And he also Confessed, confessed to a crime in which his hand had a, a tattoo on it, identified by the uh, victim, and he confessed to that because we pointed out you got a tattoo in, on your hand. Miranda's attorneys filed their appeals through the Arizona Supreme Court. The court upheld its conviction, so lawyers took it one step further to the U.S. Supreme Court, where the decision was reversed. Meanwhile, Miranda had been booked here and did serve time before he was eventually paroled. But his long trail of crimes didn't stop and trouble followed him to the end. He was on parole. He was released in 74. He spent 11 years in prison, went back to the same environment, was drinking and playing poker, got into a fight. The fight resulted in him being stabbed twice and those stab wounds killed him. The original Miranda exhibit is on display at the Phoenix Police Museum daily from 9 to 3.